I have an idea. Let's paint some babies. Compared to me, they are babies. But in the miniature realm, they're giant babies. Welcome back again, my friends. Today, I'm collaborating with John from Tabletop Witchcraft. The idea here is that I'll paint a pair of dragons in a classical fire and ice combination to be added to this larger airship diorama slash gaming table that he has constructed. We collaborated together on that one as well. But things must grow, as always. Everything must grow. So we're going to be adding on to that previous creation. I also want to say a big thank you to Alchemy 3D Prints for supplying these double dragons. So be sure to check out John's video and also be sure to check out Alchemy 3D Prints. Let's talk about painting a pair of dragons. They are large, but they don't need to be extremely detailed. Most of the time they'll be featured in very wide shots, I expect. It's a very big project. So I want to be uh, somewhat fast and effective and I think create miniatures that are more suited for, uh, for gaming. But nonetheless, nonetheless, pack a visual impact. So starting off with a black and white primer coat to immediately pull out the textures. There's a certain directional spray, but mainly I'm spraying in the old top-down zenithal approach. Now over this black and white take, I'm going to airbrush down a layer of skeleton bone. This will still show the light map, but tone it in a warmer direction. You'll see why that's important in the coming steps. Playing on that same light map, I'll begin toning out the blue dragon. I'm going to be starting off bright using the color Stormwolf. Be sure to keep the brush at the right angle to keep the shadows in place. This is all about layered transparencies. These prints came out with a lot of lovely textures and playing upon the transparencies and directing the proper angles, I think I can get something fast and effective painted up. Shading it down even further, I'll be adding Sapphire Gem into the mix. Um, again, just maintain the angle. I know it seems, I'm, I'm pretty much painting backwards, but I feel this way I can get a sharper cut. I don't know. Um, I suppose I could wonder why people paint in the way that they do from dark to light. But on a large creature like this, playing with the transparency, I'm slowly wrapping darker colors into the shadows, and the shadow portions become smaller and smaller. It also seems appropriate to kind of tone out the belly in a natural way. I'll use some yellow dune and just keep that angled towards the uh, midsection. Quickly color that in, letting a little bit of the blue still breathe through. Next up, let's go to the salon. I'm going to test your sanity by applying an airbrush paint with a normal brush. I'll be using elven armor to give my dragon some shimmering purple nails. Beautiful. With that in place, I added some Beowulf blue to my airbrush and began shading deeper. Speed paints are really fun to use in this way. More play with the transparency and textures. Lovely. And now that the main mass is painted, I'll lay down a very diluted coat of magic blue. Also, from the speed paint range, I'm using the speed paint medium to thin this down pretty far. It's probably eight parts speed paint medium, two parts magic blue, but just adding a general glazing, a nice coating over all of these lovely blue tones to further meld everything together, make it nice and smooth for the eyes to gaze upon. I'll finalize Frost Mane with some highlights of blue sapphire and small amounts of white mixed in wherever appropriate. I'm going in at some very targeted areas, kind of picking out the areas that are most protruding and facing upwards towards the light, detailing the face out, the tops of the forearms, the hands, the shoulders. I could get lost, you know, doing 200 lines and staying up all night, so I just want to keep this fast and effective and just uh, bump in on some key areas. 
The eyes will be painted with glowing inferno, first laying down a hefty base coat and then a dot of demonic yellow to raise them up. These nice bright yellow eyes will sit quite well amongst the blue shades. The nails very quickly will be brought up with some mithril on the edges, just highlighting a metallic paint with my brightest silver. Lastly, the lickety tongue will be shaded down with a mixture of gothic blue and black, and I'll highlight it up with the same tones that I used on the skin, just keeping the uh, cold tone running throughout. And now, my second baby, the red dragon. It will be painted much the same as the blue dragon, but hey, for fun and example, why not have a look at the red dragon? I'll be sitting here painting it anyways. So beginning from that same step where the model was primed and then the white areas were sprayed over with skeleton bone, I will tone out that light ivory with Archangel Red. After that, I'll start deepening it with Dragon Red. I mean, what better color to paint the red dragon than Dragon Red? Again, maintaining the angles, kind of pulling back down into the shadows, seeping into the darkness. At this point, I'd like to mask off the head with some poster putty real quick, like um, just spraying some matte black onto these prominent horns on the head as the horns grow out the uh, keratin, or maybe the bones are black. Who knows? Everything is made up. But yeah, it's just uh, becoming darker as they extend away from the head. Now, with most of the areas based, a diluted layer of slaughter red was blocked plot was brought into play. Again, just uh, a very thin, you know, we're, we're letting all of that, the primer is still showing through. Everything has been filtered in such a way, you know, we're producing more than just one tone by spraying over this sort of uh, light map. So the Slaughter Red is going to help to just merge everything together. Just do what a wash does, but again, I uh, just want to stress that it's a thin filter. Of course, it's doing washy things going into the crevices, but think of it as more of a glaze, a unifying candy coating, like rolling a sheet of tint over a window. I'll bring Desolate Brown into play on the wings. I love that color. Um, the wings, they were hit with the same uh, sandy dune yellow that the, the belly of the blue dragon was hit with. But just to kind of make that, you know, pull them back in the yellow direction, the Desolate Brown was added. Speaking of belly lines, a little bit of Archangel Red will be sprayed down the middle of the Red Dragon, just lightening it up ever so naturally with a nice bright orange. The Harns! Since I already had Gothic Blue on my palette, I mixed black with Gothic Blue, just making a slightly lighter, more purplier black. I began highlighting the dark talons in a very wide fashion with that color. Then, tightening things up very quickly, I highlighted with Runic Cobalt. It's like a very faded denim jean color, but just very sharp, precise highlights, so I get this uh, kind of glistening, yet I'm overusing the word sharp, look to the horns. Uh, it's a very quick jump, but we can afford to move a little fast and effective on this. The eyes were given the same treatment of glowing inferno with a dot of demonic yellow to highlight. While the surrounding area was darkened with that gothic blue and black mixture, uh, just making the dragon look a little sleepy. Then it was the long step of highlighting glowing inferno. Again, I would target some main areas of focus, you know, just the face, the tops of the hands, the protruding forearms and big old biceps, rippling thighs projecting deltoids, shredding chest, horse neck, all the parts of the perfect body. I want to pick those out and give them a nice sharp highlight. And now, after staring at my children, it was hard to decide if they were truly perfect, or perhaps it is not known to man the failure of his own crops or the wickedness of his own sons. So I decided my children were not good enough. I decided to pull the airbrush back out and I added Magnolia Brown with a touch of matte black into my machine and began airbrushing some of the more major shadows in place. I wanted a deeper definition for the, for the further away look that these will be viewed from. I want them to have 
more impact. So I saw, thought some prominent deep shadows really send them home. Dragon Babies! I hope you had a good time watching this video. I hope that it informs you in further decisions. This is a very useful technique that can be applied in such a variety of ways. Consider changing the undertone, wrapping a variety of colors. There's, there's so many ways that you can, you can stack this and arrange this approach to painting. So I hope that you get some takeaway from that and modify it, make it your own. Please be sure to scope out my Patreon if you'd like to see more consistent weekly tutorials. I have blog entries. We do a monthly meetup discussing, you know, kind of a, a feedback session. There's a whole lot of action there. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the like and subscribe. I'll appreciate it. And the big thank you to John once again. This is fun to do. It's cool to do big things. I like very small things. I like very big things. It's fun to think about. So I appreciate you watching this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Until we meet again, my friends, remain unchained. And there you have it, babies. I hope you enjoyed my babies. One red, one blue. Uh, that. Hmm.